Welcome to Moving Through and Beyond, a podcast dedicated to sharing inspired journeys of redefining life, vision, and purpose after immense hardship and grief. My goal with this podcast is to give you hope and to let my guest journeys inspire you to make the choice to keep looking up. I'm your host, Carrie Conley. Hi, everybody. This is Carrie Conley, the host of Moving Through and Beyond podcast. I am so honored to bring on some really, truly amazing people that just organically show up in my life. Um, I met this young woman through, we can't even figure out, we tried to talk yesterday about where did where did we first connect? And we think it was somebody that we mutually know on a clubhouse room somewhere. As a matter of fact, now that I'm thinking about it, Christine, I can think about it. Was it, uh, no, you told me it was a gentleman that introduced us, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So anyway, it doesn't matter. We ended up on a Zoom <laughs> together, and she just seriously impressed the heck out of me. Um, this young woman is all of, what, 27 years old and is so mature for this age group because of a lot of her life and what she's been through, and she's been willing to come on and talk about it. So, And I have to tell you, she lives a pretty awesome life. You guys want to follow her on Instagram. And I'm going to have you tell them where to find you at the end, Christina. She's a dancer, actress, movie producer, all the things in L.A. Such an exciting life, girl. Thank you so much, Carrie. It is such a pleasure. I adore you. I respect you, admire you. And being able to sit down and talk and just talk life, I'm just, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm grateful. And, you know, you said something yesterday that resonated with me, too. You said, you know, we've only met each other and talked probably less than a handful of times, I'm betting. Oh, yeah. I think probably four or five. Right. And I feel like, like you're another daughter to me. Like we're like we're family. Like there's no fluff in our conversations. It's always deep and it's always talking about life and what we're both going through. And I appreciate that so much. And I do too. I mean, when I've been through some really, really my lowest lows, like I called you, you were one of the first people that came to my heart and my mind of like, I need your wisdom and your discernment and guidance. Wow. So, so honored. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself. How did you come to do what you do right now? I've had quite the journey, <laughs> still still on it. Um, so I'm from, I don't even know if you know this, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, yeah, the good old South. And um, I started dancing when I was seven. Absolutely fell in love with it. Took, you know, 70 to 80% of my life was dance, like just all day, every day after school till 10 p.m. on the weekends. Um, and then dance eventually brought me out to California, I was doing a a dance convention with really renowned choreographers, and I eventually started training in LA, got signed in LA, started acting to help my dancing, to help my dancing kind of become more emotive, fell in love with acting, uh, started spending my summers in high school out here with my mom, who was also in the industry, um, just training and trying to build connections and and have opportunities. Um, And then I went to UCLA. Um, my, my dad was like, if you're going to pursue this industry, you need to get an education. You know, he's a very standard, classic Southern man. Um, and I agreed too. I was like, I want to have that, um, intellectual backbone to support me in whatever creative endeavors. So went to UCLA, studied communications, kind of stepped away from entertainment for a bit. Um, and, and then <laughs> God just brought me back to entertainment. So I started acting and dancing again when I graduated. Um, I had like um, some meetings set up at some big companies to work in the corporate world um, in marketing and uh, sales. And I went through like all of the interviews and I was at the very end and I was in this interview for this company where I would have made amazing money and, you know, really climbed the ladder. And... Um, they asked me in the final interview, they were like, so we see here that you used to act and dance. Is that something that you're going to miss? Um, and I looked at them and I just couldn't contain myself. I was just like, um, no. <laughs> and I went home and uh-huh. I didn't get the job. Um, and so, you know, I slowly started doing all the entertainment things and started being an entrepreneur and, just taking all different kinds of like marketing and event jobs um, on the side to kind of support my career. Right. 
Um, and then fast forward, things have been growing slowly and steadily. A couple of years ago, I started um, during COVID, I started a job working in um, for a network, just a side job. Um, spearheading, running their social media. And then I was still acting and dancing, but obviously given the, um, the, the, you know, COVID and everything being shut down, things were slower. Um, and so then eventually that, um, turned into me creating my own content, going on set and filming the content, being like a producer. And then I started working for that company. Um, they moved me over to production um, and so I started working in production, like prep for movies and um, come pitching ideas, reaching out to talent, trying to get talent attached to films. Um, and so now I'm um, fast forward a couple of years and I am producing my first associate producing my first um, film with Fox Tubi that is going to start filming in like two weeks. So exciting. Um, yeah. And so that has been crazy journey, uh, still acting and dancing, um, but being able to kind of mix them all together and really have the, um, the control and the power to like bring my own projects to the table and create what I'm going, I want to tell is it's really, really amazing. Well, I watch you obviously, like I said, on Instagram and your dancing is phenomenal, Christina. I mean, it's just mesmerizing. So I'm just really intrigued that you are taking your talent and following your dreams because this is a tough business you are in. I don't know that I ever told you this, but I grew up wanting to be an actress and a singer. Really? Yeah. And my family thought that was super cute. And they came to all my little singing productions, you know, at high school and the little talent shows and stuff. But it was very clear early on that I was going to college and getting a degree. So mm -hmm. I went that path. But like I said, it's a bucket list item of mine to be on a set of a movie somehow, some way, because I just think it would be so exciting. So we'll talk more about that. It intrigues me that you are able to manage all of this, Christina, because I also know on the personal side of life, you've had to grow up really fast. You yes. told me yesterday that you've been a caregiver pretty much almost all your life, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely have had... Um, I've had a privileged life in certain ways, and I've also had a lot of hardship um, and being a caretaker from a really young age. Um, and um, I think for a long time, I always kind of used my successes and focusing on achieving to distract myself from the pain and distract myself from um, hardship that I my, was going through. And um, the past couple of years, God has really sat me down and been like, you're stopping and we're going to face this stuff. Um, it's It's been crazy. Do you want me to go a little bit more into yeah, that? Yeah, please. Are and you know, I, you know, I can really resonate with what you're talking about, Christina, because you know, I've been through a lot in my life with the losses I've had. Um, and, you know, for a while, it was, I ran. Like, I did a lot. I threw a lot on my plate to keep super busy. And then, like you, about a year or two ago, God just said, yeah, it's time for you to take a little break because we need to face what we're going through right now or I can't take you to the next level. That is the biggest part is like where we're, where we're, where God wants to take us is not possible unless we do the dirty work of really cleansing and detoxing and purifying the pain and the suffering and the trauma. One hundred percent. Well, to for starters, I didn't think I wanted to take the pause or think I should. Um, what happened was I got COVID really badly, and I actually have neurological long COVID, and so it's still to this day. Um, I've had for the past couple of years, like I would go to the grocery store and have to sleep for two days. It was just super intense um, depression and fatigue. And like as a dancer, I've had to really shift. Um, it doesn't look like it on social media, but I've had to really shift. So that happened and all these things happened with my, with my family, with my parents. My dad's in his 80s and he has not been doing well. My mom has been sick as well. So all that happened at once and I just was so overwhelmed. I was single. 
I was living alone. My roommate had just moved out. So I was completely by myself. Um, and I've been by myself the past couple of years and I just, it's been a journey, you know, but, um, I just feel like God gives you what you need in the moment to get to the next moment. It's like taking things day by day. Um, and for me, yeah, prayer and my church and my faith and my spirituality has been like the, oh, everything, like the thing that has allowed me to keep taking steps forward when I just feel like my world is crashing. Um, and community, God, as you and I, God places people in your life when you need them the most. And he, you're, you're never alone. Even when you feel like you're alone, there's, there's some, there's a wink to be seen, you know? Yeah. Yes. I just want to commend you, Christina, for paying attention to the signs, right? You can only run so long and then you were, you were willing to say, okay, this has got to stop and I got to do whatever I need to do in the midst of you ha holding a really heavy workload and taking care of both your parents. I mean, that's a lot for a 27 year old. Yeah, it, it's a lot. And that's, I mean, I believe that trauma and hardship can also seep into your like emotional well being. And I think my health. Um, I have been sick, but I also think that everything I've been through at the same time really was impacting that. Um, and spending, honestly, spending a lot of time by myself in prayer and journaling and reading and seeking and talking to people I respect and um, just trying to like seek and like receive healing. Yeah. I think the first thing we're, we're both saying here is the awareness, becoming super aware and then just having been literally, I think you and I both were forced into sitting down and taking the break mm -hmm. um, because I tend to run ahead and wait for God to catch up. And that works for just so long. And then all of a sudden I get knocked down and he'll just level me flat on the floor going, yeah, we're not moving until you pay attention to what I'm doing. And it's not easy. The work you and I are talking about doing, I'd rather poke my eye with a fork. I mean, it's hard doing this trauma work and working with counselors and taking the pause and taking the quiet time and not wanting to run through the pain. But you and I both have talked about how we know we both have a longer journey ahead and bigger mm -hmm. things to do. And we can't do that unless we heal first. Right. Mm -hmm. And God will take you through things layer by layer. That's another thing I realize is He's not like, I'm not going to have to go through everything at once because I can't handle that. It's like layer by layer. Um, and you, f it's crazy when you start to realize that when you feel the things, which I never would feel, I was pursuing acting, but I wasn't letting myself feel. So how am I supposed to, you know, be an amazing actress when I'm not letting myself feel anything normally? Um, and so starting to feel things, I realized, oh, okay, I actually feel way better after I just cried or like after I just had this like horrible, sad day. The next day I felt alive and well. So that's another thing I think that a lot of people my age and in general, we just, we don't want to feel the hard things, but it, it makes me feel better. I would agree. And I have to tell you, even people at my age don't want to do it. I have to pay people to make me do it, Christina. So, so you are way further ahead than me. But, you know, it's interesting to me. Do you feel like there's a lot of people your age that are going through similar things that you are? Well, in my life, I've people have been placed in my life who have either are on the other side. So, some of my friends. So, I feel like for a long time, most of my friends know no one really understood. No one had been through some of the hardships that I had been through. And so I kind of felt like disconnected in, in that sense of like people em really empathizing. But now I feel like as I've done the work, more people have come into my life that have been through harder and um, similar. And we're kind of on the journey together. Um, so that, yeah. Yeah. I wondered about that because I, at this moment in my life, I know a lot of young adults. For some reason, 
I, I resonate with them. They gravitate towards mm-hmm. me. I don't know what mm-hmm. that is, but I enjoy that group a lot and want to start working more with them. Um, all with different stories. But I to, th- to date, Christina, I have not met somebody who has been through what you've been through at this young of an age and have been able to handle it as maturely as you are. And I think it's because you are so rooted, number one, in your faith. And number two, you seek personal growth. And that is huge. Because I, a lot of the young adults that I see that are really struggling um, are not necessarily seeking personal growth. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Or am I wrong? I think that it's really, um, and I, I have moments for sure myself of, um, being stagnant. I don't stay stagnant for very long, but it's, it's comfortable to stay put in something that's easy and feels, you know, feels not normal per se, um, or a job that you don't really like, but you know, pays the bills and it's easy. You can just keep doing it. Um, I think definitely, but I do feel like my generation, like there's this shift where people are starting to like, you know, the self-help, the self-reflection is becoming a more of a, a cultural revolution almost. And people are becoming more, I think, aware. Um, but still, I mean, I would say the majority um, are not, don't have maybe the utmost growth mindset. But I think that's what like we're here to do is to help people like that's my favorite thing in the world is to talk to someone and see where they can be and where they are and what needs to be like shed, what needs to be um, exposed or looked at to get them to where they're supposed to be. Have you ever thought about being a life coach? I have. And I I do. (laughs) Just popped right into my head. And I don't know if we've talked about that before, but the reason I'm bringing on more young adults like you, Christina, is that I know some of them will listen to me, but I think they'll listen to mentors more like you Mm. that are in their age group and just a little bit further ahead in personal growth, Mm. development, tough stuff that you've been through. Might be something to think about. It's definitely something that I have been playing around with. And I actually have like a a social account I made a couple of years ago called Tina Talks. And that's something that it's still in the works of like, I'm going to actually, you know, launch it down the line, but just in that realm, helping others and mentoring and helping just people to find their light and their purpose. Right. Yeah. Need more of you, especially in your age group. And I know that you've um, toyed with the idea of having a podcast too. I have, yep. <laughs> Might want to give that some thought, my friend. I love it. You're you're all the things that I know I'm supposed to do. You're just spreading, just sharing it with me. I love it. I got the vision. That's kind of my thing, you know. <laughs> but I think yes. you have it too. And I think now more than ever, not only you being able to come on and share your story um, of what you've been through, which is not easy. Um, but also to share some of the resources that helped you. It's going to help a lot of people. So Mm -hmm. if there's anybody out there, Christina, that maybe is your age or maybe they're older or younger that, you know, they're just going through a really tough time. Like you told me these past three years for you have been pretty dark, Mm -hmm. right? Um, What would you tell them would be maybe the top three things to do? So number one, and this is a tricky one, is your mindset. And I've always been super, super optimistic. Um, the past couple of years has really given my mindset a test. And I've definitely been in like some depressive seasons and hopeless seasons. But I think the mindset of like this hopeful optimism, the like every day starting your day, where am I going to see God? If you believe in God, I mean, I believe in God. So for me, it's like, where am I going to see God today? Where am I going to see him show up? Or what beauty is going to come to me today? And having that like optimistic, hopeful start to your day and, and mindset, you will see it. And you you see the magic, you see the synchronicities, you see the the beauty that, that comes to you, even in, in hard pain and suffering. But I think mindset is really important. Um, and working on your mindset to change it if it's if it's negative affirmations. I used to every day do. I'm still do it 
infrequently, but affirmations every day, gratitude lists. Um, gratitude is huge. Huge, huge, huge. Um, number two, prayer and, and meditation, getting yourself centered and kind of ri- being able to rise above the, the world and the, your circumstances is everything. And it really helps like increase your mood too. Um, and then community, like the right community. Cause I've had different communities where I've, I've loved the people, but maybe I don't feel that they really resonate with kind of what, what we were saying, like what I've been through, um, or maybe where. Yeah. That can be a challenge, I think, in your generation, Christina, because you're so, so much of the, the identity can be wrapped up in your tribe, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, somebody who is a little bit further ahead in maturity in their journey because of what you've been through, it's hard for you to resonate with the people who have not been through anything. They're just having fun through life and just, you know, just kind of winging it. It's challenging. Yes. Yeah. But it's everything that you find the people that are going in the direction that you're going. Exactly. Exactly. And the people that you surround yourself with do uh, determine who you are and where you're going. Um, I've seen that time and time again. And it's crazy how one person being coming close with one person can make you or, or break you. Like I've had connections with people that because of them, I was able to like unlock this next level of myself, you know, or these other opportunities came to me because I was just having a different perspective that they inspired me to have. So, yeah. And I constantly am looking for those people too. Always. I talk about the front row a lot. I don't know if you've ever heard me do that exercise of making sure that the people that you allow in the front row of your life are the people who are in the nines and tens, the people mm. who inspire you, they believe in your vision, they talk you up when you're feeling down. They're maybe even yeah. a little bit further ahead in the journey, maybe even in your industry, right? Um, and I'm constantly reviewing that front row. Because if there's anybody who's less than a nine or 10 that you're allowing there, it mm. takes energy from the other people and from you. It's it really power of association is a big, big deal. And backing off of that with family too. And that is something that I've had to over the past couple of years really learn boundaries of, you know, your family. Of course, you want to honor your family and respect them, but that doesn't mean sacrificing yourself in totality. It doesn't mean sacrificing, you know, your well being. Um, obviously, there are moments where that is a different story, but in general, I, I believe and I'm learning uh, boundaries with with family and and it's the same with the energy like if you have someone in your family that's like ex- taking all of your energy because you know they're you're trying to save them or you're trying to help them um i think it it takes a lot of like reevaluating like okay what is healthy for me like what are the what are good boundaries and wh- how can i take care of myself first okay i'm so glad you brought that up because this is a topic i think in every conversation you and i have had it's been about boundaries mm-hmm. specifically with family mm-hmm. And I know you've worked really hard on that, and I know it's been really challenging. And I'm betting there's a lot of other people your age that are um, struggling with that, especially because Mm -hmm. it's your parents. You want to honor them. Mm -hmm. You want to respect them. You want to help them. So what are are just a couple of boundaries you put in place that helped you? So the statement, uh, can someone – if someone can do it for themselves – you shouldn't be doing it for them. And so I use that kind of as my radar with um, supporting my family members, um, if that makes sense. So if it's something that they can do for themselves, I'm not going to step in and try to control it and try to, you know, micromanage it. Um, And there's freedom in that. I think for me, I've... um, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing, I used to be the type of person that would like any, in a drop of a hat, pick up the phone if my mom was calling me, um, or get on a plane and fly home to help take care of my dad if needed. And now what I'm learning is that I have a life. I ha- God has a plan for me and God is 
is healing me. And so in my healing journey, you know, that means that I might not just pick up the phone when someone's calling just because they need me or if my family's all freaking out and texting me to do something. I'm not going to just do it because everyone's like, oh, they need Christina. So I've been learning with that boundaries of my time, um, when to step in and when not to, um, just taking care of myself. So good. I'm so proud of you because I know, like I said, every conversation we've had, it's been a little bit of this and it's been a tough thing. And I've talked to some other young adults, you know, a lot of them are um, stepping in the world and they're starting, you know, their families, their own, their, mm-hmm. you know, my daughter included. So, and it's challenging because they need to create their own world. Uh, so that is something that I'm trying to prepare for. And I had this realization, I'm currently dating someone. And um, for me, I'm starting to realize, you know, if I want to build my own family and have my own kids, like, I, you have to also, there's like a level of separation that has to happen from your parents in order to have the space emotionally to have a healthy relationship. Um, and so that's something that I've been working on as so well. So good. So, so good. I know you have big plans for where you're going next. What's, what's on your horizon for right, right, right now? What's in Christina's vision? Well, number one, healing like obviously emotionally, but physically too, with um, the long COVID stuff. I'm doing something if for anyone out there that's listening that is having long COVID problems or suffering with chronic fatigue, depression, um, anxiety, um, hyperbaric oxygen chamber is something that I started doing. My doctor recommended it and it's been really helping. So that's been great. Um, And really just, Right now I'm, I'm working on producing. I've got like some really cool projects that are in development and um, pitching new ideas and just learning and growing in production. Um, I see myself, right now I'm gaining all of these tools to be a producer. And then down the line, I see myself um, doing spearheading Christian faith-related films, dance-related films, basically putting all of my passions together and then being able to act and dance in them um, as well as um, mentoring women uh, for sure. People in general, but I see myself mentoring young women, um, just helping people to find purpose and find, um, find their light. Yes. Well, it's no accident why you and I met. Right. You're like the way younger version of me. (laughs) Seriously, way younger. I turned 61 tomorrow, Christina. No way. I can't even believe it. I can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth. But, um, you know, I just I know that God's got big things for you and everything that you've been through and your faith and your talents and your passions are all going to come together. And I can't wait to see what comes out of it. And I hope I get to be a part of it. I'm serious about I, com- yeah. I w- I want you to, and you will. And from the 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 moment that we connected, I felt like I could breathe a little bit. You know what I mean? And of course, you know we're talking a lot of optimism and positivity right now, but that doesn't take away from like, you know, I have been, and so have you, so many really really hard days. But like you know, that makes we can connect deeper and understand each other more because of that. And the way that you are changing the world and impacting people, it inspires me and what I want to do. Um, because life is so precious and we can live in such a high vibration and such a blissful walk with God if we do the work to get there. If we do the work and we listen to the right voices. And that is a choice. I'm glad you touched on mindset because that is the first thing I have to do every day as well um, Mm -hmm. is is get my head to rise above the circumstances, right? So I can come and do things like this with you. I was so excited that you were going to be on this podcast with me today. I appreciate you so very much. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so, so, so much. And you're going to be in LA soon. Yes, ma'am. you're going to come on set with me. Okay. You all heard it here, people. I'm going. I can't wait. Yes. Christina, thank you. Thank you so much. 
I want to thank all of our listeners for listening to this uh, episode of Moving Through and Beyond. I'm Carrie Conley, and I'm just here to remind you to keep looking up. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, please share it with a friend or a family member. In order to be successful on this mission, I can't do it alone. Connect with me at www.carrieconley.com. And don't forget to sign up for my weekly Do It On Purpose newsletter. Let's build this life-giving vision movement together to end this epidemic, save lives, and create purpose. Oh,